Today is Saturday, January 8th, and welcome to our workshop edition of Slow Home Studio. My name is John Brown, and this is Matthew North, and we're not actually live today, so there won't be any chatting uh, on the site. I'm actually in Los Angeles. Uh, Why are you in Los Angeles? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Isn't that amazing? Why are you there? I'm actually conducting a field trip with my students this week, and I'll, uh, as, as this is being aired, I'm probably on my way home. So. Uh, so we'll be live uh, next week, and we'll be having some new interesting program that'll be, programming that will be starting the week in the, in, that's going to be coming up. So let's get started. We're actually we're, we were looking at a project that we finished a little while ago, and uh, it's a very modest uh, change, basically furniture placement and a little bit of an, of an upgrade of some of the finishes and change to the fireplace for a, a relatively small apartment, downtown Calgary for a, a single fellow. Yep. That, was, uh, that had just recently moved from London and needed a place to, uh, to live. Yeah, and it, this is a really uh, interesting design challenge because uh, you could really go to town on this unit and knock all the walls out and redo Do it. Do all sorts of things, but, yeah. But really, uh, I don't really think you need to. I think there was a few things that we needed to focus on. I mean, the big issue is we've got this uh, really large room uh, that didn't really have a sense of how you would place the furniture. We have a big column in the middle, which is a huge structural column, and we can't. It's a non-negotiable element. It has to stay there. What he wanted was he wanted uh, a better uh, design for the fireplace, because we'll see the before pictures, it's not great. He needed a place for the TV. Yep. He also wanted a better sense of, of how the dining table would fit, because it, the dining area really was just relegated to this back corner. Uh, the kitchen, we just uh, redid in terms of the cabinetry faces, and we'll show some pictures of that. The other big design uh, challenge was this front bedroom, which is a long and thin room. It had a, a, a door conflict with the closet door. He really wanted this to be both a study and a guest bedroom, and he needed uh, an improved way of getting in and out of it uh, that worked with the circulation better. So those were the principal challenges. And the, the one big challenge that really we weren't able to deal with because it just because of the, the existing condition was the lack of a good entry. Correct. Uh, this door comes right off, as I mentioned yesterday, a, a small uh, garden, and you come right into the space. This, was, this still drives me crazy looking at this. You come right into the entry, and there's the fireplace there, and we can't move the door, and we can't move the fireplace. No. And so really it wasn't possible. We tried all kinds of, of, of things, screens, and everything, and it basically just didn't work because all of the light is here and the yep. fireplace is there. So we weren't really able to do very much about that. And so in that case, you just got to make the best of it and see what you can what you can do. Yeah. So here's the uh, the the, uh, the, the the before. The before. And That's I mean, looking that way. Yeah. You can see the sort of granny's panties over the windows. And I know. And, and the dark the, mauve. I mean, the, the mauve, colors yeah, are Yeah. This was awful. a kind of '80s building. And there's that fireplace. Yeah. You can see the yeah. door. It's that this is the other thing too that drives me nuts is that door was a very sort of typical builder door, you know, without any glass or anything in it. And then we've got the two other doors, and big windows there, and it just is awkward with that 45 no, degree angle. No, that's right. And there's the there was the the, uh, the small television yep. over on that side. And he wanted a bigger flat screen TV and you know better storage and stuff like that. Fireplaces over. Okay, now. This is really fun. Here you can see that huge column. Yeah, and, and of, of course, course they painted it purple yep. because, you know, they want to make it stand out even more than what it is. And then they've so tried... So this is basically looking that way, yeah. right? So you can see that's the, 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 uh, the, the back entry, the to, the back parkade. entry to the parkade, and then that's going into the, uh, into the master. Ensemble. I mean, I think this is a great shot because it really shows the problem with the dining room. I, I think that, you know, the, the dining space feels very, like, I mean, it looks in this, like it's shoved into the corner, and they've got all those sort of hutches and stuff, and it's, it's very... It uh, feels very transient and sort of lonely back there. And the reality is that we can't change the doors. No. We can't really do anything there. It's just a question of how do you, how do you try and make that look like I know. it's more this intentional, is This is right? over-furnished. Like, there's just too many you hutches. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> over-furnished. And then now this is sweeping back a little bit, and there's that still the door out into the, uh, into the back. And then this is now the kitchen. The yeah. kitchen had this weird little thing here with two... two to um, a place to sit, which yeah. just made I no want to talk about that bulkhead too in the kitchen because we did do a little bit of a detail. Uh, you can see they've just, I mean, this is typically what builders will do is when there's a plumbing stack or HVAC or something, they'll just, they'll just do the minimum sort of box. So you have this sort of carbuncle and look at sort of the shape of what the drywall ended up being here. It's all sort of gnarly and it's all sort of carbuncled out. So we wanted to address this as well and uh, we did a little design detail uh, to improve the lighting and to sort of get rid of that bump. And you can see the, uh, the door into that, uh, into that second bedroom. Yeah, which, right. And right there and it wasn't... Uh, Not ideal, no. no. 
So this was the existing that we had, and this was the, uh, the change that we, that we made. Yeah, and I think the, the couple of design elements that we did, we, we really focused on a few things, because we didn't really have a lot of, um, we, we didn't really go to town on this project, but we did a couple things. We built a little uh, wall here. And we will see that in the 3D model. Um, and that uh, provided a bit of display this way. And it also provided an end to the kitchen. Yeah. And also a ceiling detail, which we will show in a little bit. Uh, in a little bit. We also um, made this corner. Uh, we, what we did is we added a bit of uh, framing here and here. And we inset a bookcase uh, that was built into the wall to give the table a, a sense of focus. focus and a place to, gr to, ground, to ground it. And, and we'll see that in the, in the model coming up. We also added a piece of millwork uh, to the side of the fireplace. Uh, so for basically some storage. extending the, 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 uh, the design of the fireplace. Yeah, and the round column was here. And uh, what we did is we, uh, again, used millwork. And we created an object and that acted as a room divider between the living space and the dining space. And we encased the column in it. So it's still there, but we made it uh, less uh, noticeable. The last little detail that we did is we got rid of that door and we extended the wall down and we put a sliding barn door that was uh, quite big, five feet actually, uh, there. And we did it out of solid wood, and we'll see that in a minute. And it actually uh, acted as the privacy door uh, to the study. And we thought of this room as having two uses. The front was the study with the desk and the back we uh, had a sleeper sofa uh, with a little cabinet that could become a guest room. That's so right. we segmented didn't really that. need to have it as a dedicated guest bedroom all of the time. And the nice thing about this is that when this is open, and we, we shifted this down so that when this was open, this living space kind of goes out like that, and it becomes part of the main living space of the house rather than this bedroom that you never see at all. And then there's still this, this more, private. Uh, more private space over there in the back. Yep. So this is the, uh, this is the, the final um, uh, living room area, and you can see that we're sort of looking that way. So this is that piece that Matthew was just talking about there. So the column is, is, is back in, in here, and then we extended it out with a low kind of bench height piece. Yeah, and we put a little light above it, and that is a place where you can put an object, uh, some sort of art uh, decorative piece, uh, and it divides the living area from the dining area. We did something. Uh, interesting too with the uh, television is we actually drywalled um, a notch uh, in um, the wall um, because if you remember from the before picture there were two planes of drywall the fireplace box uh, was a bit uh, pr proud of the flue and we just extended the flue out so it was all on the same plane and we inset a very thin uh, lacquered uh, box that the TV sat in that we made a very dark color and of course thank you that TVs are thin now so we don't have a huge amount of space back and that grounded the TV and then to the side of it we just put a full height floor to ceiling uh, lacquered millwork door that had all of the components and some additional uh, book storage. Right. And I think what's interesting about about this is is that uh, we try to just be extremely minimal. We didn't have a there wasn't a lot of money to, to to work on this project. It was also something that given the size of it it didn't need to be over articulated and so yeah. it really was just a question of uh, of leaving the firebox the way it was and well all we did was we took piece. we took the brass off of it yeah. and we painted it black yeah. we didn't add any additional trim or anything to it we just left the unit the way that it was and just by taking the brass off and painting it it made it look composed and like it was intentionally designed so, that so way. let's just talk about this for a, for a couple of minutes because I think it, it bears a little bit of, of uh, detail basically what we did if this is looking at it in plan is we, we inset a very small notch. This is looking so that surface there is, is there. It then goes back like this and then in where the cabinet is, is over on this side. Yeah. And then we just had the mill worker come and they just installed a box yeah. that comes just out proud yeah. of that, like that. And that then becomes the surface that the TV sits in. And that was important because you see a lot of times with uh, now that there's flat screen TVs where they just kind of 
plunked on the wall above the fireplace, and I always think that that looks a little. Well, you can always clinical. see that. Well, you it's can like see a sports bar. The other thing too is from the side, you can always see the cords and stuff going into the back of the TV, right? So what we did is we just brought a little bit of a shadow box to the side so that the plugs and stuff can be in behind. It's actually interesting because with flat screen TVs, even though they're thin, you need a few inches behind to access yeah, the cords, the cables and the cables have to turn the corner and go down and behind. So the Basically box, I think, was there. about I think we were about six inches, six or seven inches deep. Um, and the TV sat at the very front end of that, but you needed that space just to be able to plug everything in and, and, and fish all your, your cables through. Because you can imagine there's also a, in the back here that we did a cable chase that went from the TV into the, uh, into the component storage because the components sat there and there was, a, there was a grommet in the back of the cabinet that allowed the, the cords to pull through. And if you're too tight, like a lot of, I've seen this before where designers are, are really tight with the TV backs, the TVs then have to stick out a little bit further and so you kind of defeat the purpose. You've got to allow just an extra couple of inches to get the wiggle room in there for the cords. Also, if, if this wasn't there, then you would have this as an object floating on that white wall, just like that visually speaking. Yeah. By putting that in there, you're actually, we're able to expand the size of that, that visual element so that it becomes something that's more substantive and it becomes part of the design of that fireplace wall rather than just another object that goes on top of it. So yeah. for, for very little um, design effort and construction effort, you're able to, uh, to, to have quite a big impact. This is another view of that. You can see how that piece now comes out proud as an object and beyond this wall just slightly and in front yeah. of that and uh, then you can see how it sits there. So, so this surface is actually that surface. That's right. And we actually, because there is a change in plane, we were able to, what we just did is we just strapped this uh, with some framing and then we strapped that with some framing there. And we were able to get that little uh, extra carved out space for the TV. And then we just took the brass off, just, I think we just took it off or we spray painted it one or the other. And that was it. That's all we did. And uh, we also, if you notice, we just did a slight uh, paint color change here because we painted the uh, the surface of the fireplace in the white white color, which was the color of the ceiling, and then we had this sort of sizely ropey color, which we used as the wall color that wrapped around uh, the windows. So it made the fireplace just stand out just a little bit more as an object in the room. And then we have the woven wood um, lines, window lines coverings over, over yeah, top. Yes, so we of got that. rid of the, the granny's panties, like you like to call that. So now this is looking at the dining room. So this is sitting looking this way, and this is that built-in piece that Matthew talked about. Yeah, and about. the important thing that we did is we, we made those two notches on the side, but we also did a notch on the ceiling. So we actually brought a, a bulkhead down uh, on top of the millwork so the millwork didn't have to go all the way up to the ceiling. That allowed us to get some puck lights, uh, the housing of the puck lights in the top of the uh, millwork, which was a really nice detail because we had a little bit of extra space there. And we just did that in a really dark uh, oak. We also uh, stained the floors uh, in the dark oak as well. And because uh, we didn't replace the floors, all we did was we, uh, we sanded them and then we put a dark stain on to give it that sort of uh, more uh, modern look. And then we matched that to the millwork and then we offset that with, with, a, with a dining table that was light. So we had the contrast of the light uh, table sitting on the dark floor. And then this really, I think, gave a, a sense of a grounded feeling for the, for the table and the dining space. And it also worked as you could also um, he liked to sit there on, with his laptop as well, and uh, he could use it as a study because there's a bit of closed storage below for files and stuff. Well, and I often think that, you know, in this situation where you're trying to give a, provide some sort of visual focus for a dining room like this and you've got that extra space, building in a, a bookshelf is actually a really nice thing because it, it gives a kind of double duty to the, to the dining room. It can become both library as well as, as, uh, as dining. You've got this, we, we chose a trestle type table so that it, you know, it, it's it is kind of desk-like kind of desk -like yeah. or, or, you know, um, uh, library type and uh, and it does it just it integrates that space into the whole uh, into the whole open plan living area in a, and I think in a, in a nice way I think the thing that's nice too about this I have to say is that if like he was a single guy but if he if he ended up being a couple or a couple moved in here there is still a study you know in the study study where one person could work but another person with the laptop and with wireless could sit there and still feel like they have a study space as well. Yep. Because the dining table is not going to be used for dining you know, 24 hours a day. But it gives two people the opportunity to work in different parts of the plan. And they're both you know, really good spaces to work in. This is a view looking back towards that door. I want to talk about the casing detail just for a sec. Because this door, I really dislike this door. It really bothered me. It bothered yep. me right from the beginning because it was a, a fire door. Um, so it was a heavy kind of door. It was the metal insulated doors. 
And what we did, because we wanted to kind of soften this a little bit, is we actually did the casing. We paneled um, all the way up to the ceiling uh, with the casing, um, and we uh, did that all the same color uh, to make it more seamless, and we replaced the handle, which was a terrible handle before. It was kind of industrial looking, to minimize the impact of that door so there wasn't a visual thing, because in the old plan, it had white trim on it, had a white metal door. We didn't replace the door, and it had a big commercial like bulbous handle because it was a parkade door basically. And so we just softened that up a little bit. And then you can see here the proportion of the bookcase. We, uh, we brought it up uh, so that it was at the eight foot line. So then we uh, added the drywall bulkhead above the ceiling. And then we have our three lights and then our adjustable shelves uh, within the unit itself. So and th the other reason for, for having that built in like that with the bulkhead is that it does allow us to add those lights yep. the, because this ceiling we couldn't we couldn't because it's a high rise. We couldn't actually go through the ceiling no, surface. No, they're concrete. You and can't that was... add any kind of lighting. So the only way to do that is to drop a bulkhead. Yeah, you have to because it's a fire rated ceiling and you can't actually demolish that. And that was actually the plan that we did in the kitchen as well, which I think is the next slide. And I, we talked about this earlier because we had, if you remember from the before, we had that horrible little bulbous bulkhead where they were hiding some plumbing. Well, what we did is we hit it. We framed in a new opening, um, which became a display niche where we put a little light in it. Uh, and we had a vase there, but then behind it, we also dropped uh, the ceiling in the kitchen, and we uh, fr also framed in a little bulkhead uh, above the cabinets because those didn't go up to the ceiling before, and that allowed us to put four pot lights in the kitchen, which dramatically improved the light quality in the kitchen, because you can remember from the plan, this is, this is in the back corner of the unit. I mean, this is the darkest part of the plan, and the kitchen is kind of back there, and I mean, that's a very typical sort of apartment-style kitchen, like the location of it in the plan. But before, it just had one sort of sad light above, and uh, we really wanted to add some more uh, intensity. So we added uh, these pot lights, which was great. And then we also put under counter lights under the uppers, which Very provided thing to do. the task lighting. And all we did, this was, I mean, this was built in the late 80s, so it hadn't really outlived its service life, and we couldn't really justify removing the kitchen well, all you'd do is you'd put it back in exactly the same location. Yeah, like we right? couldn't because move the kitchen because of the plumbing and the issue with the yeah. commercial building and all that sort of stuff. So all we did, it, I, I thought that was kind of cool, is that the, our cabinet makers came to the site. And what they did is they took off all the doors and all the drawers, and they took them back to the shop, and they, uh, re, re, uh, they cut them again, and they uh, put new, uh, a new finish on because it was an old oak finish, and we updated it with a white maple. And then we did replace the countertops because yes. the countertops were kind of a worn out for mica. And we came back and we still did a laminate top, but we just did a hardwood edge that matches the face of the cabinets. So it gives it a very sort of uh, a more modern look to it. And then we just put a very simple white tile backsplash. And the, the bulk of the cost uh, when you build a kitchen is, of course, the guts of the kitchen, the yeah. structure the of all the cabinetry and all. And so we didn't actually change any of the drawers. All we did was we took the faces off of them, the panels off the faces. They recut them. They took them back and used them as templates and put new new veneers on them and, and sprayed them with the clear finish. And then they reinstalled them with new hardware. Yeah. And it was super cost effective and it looked like a brand new kitchen. And, and yeah, and we we used a, a you know a simple uh, standard refrigerator yep. and, and uh, we didn't really change any of that. There you can see it's it's almost, it is the same. But here we've got the surface mount lights. Yeah, these were really ineffective. And you can see this distance here between the ceiling. That's that sort of typical plant ledge that you get. And it really feels, that makes, in my opinion, that's what makes it feel like a builder kitchen where the kitchen is just kind of inserted into the corner of a room. So we, we got rid of that by having this drywall return, which we put down. And we didn't change the cabinets. You can see the outline of the original cabinets is exactly the same yeah. uh, as what it was. The fridge is in the same location. We just simply took the doors off and re refaced them. We also uh, got rid of that little uh, eating nook because really, I mean, who's going to sit there? Well, and it is a little counterintuitive, though, isn't it? Because, you know, you typically you'd think, let me just go back to the original. You know, that, that you you'd typically you think, oh, we want to try to in increase the connection between the living and the dining. We would do that typically as well. But, yeah. but when you look at the... Uh, at the result of that, it's really not very effective or very nice, and that that we found that actually closing it in and, and making it intentionally more re removed yep. by, by by doing something right there and hiding that piece right there was actually much more effective. And I think that uh, that you see it there. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think it's this is a typical. 
Uh, you see this a lot in uh, studio apartments in New York and, and like big city in older buildings. They often have the kitchen as a room removed yeah. from everything else. And, uh, you know, because they just don't have the opportunity to knock the walls out and open that up. And so we kind of took that approach with this. We sort of thought, well, you know, let's treat it more like a big city kind of apartment and let's have the kitchen separate it off. And then let's do a really good job detailing it, make it really functional, have good light, have it a great place to work in. And then the dining area can be separate and then that's where you're going to come and you're going to sit and enjoy your meal. All right. Well, I think that's probably enough talking about this. Um, welcome to 2011. On it's hard Slow to believe. Home Studio. 2011. It's, yeah, it is. We've got some exciting stuff planned for the coming year that we're going to be rolling out over the course of the next few weeks and months. And we appreciate all of you uh, watching and participating on the site. And next Saturday, we will be back with a live design project with one of our, uh, one of our viewers. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. See you later. Thank you.